The Stewart 7A model steam plant, this is part 2. Testing the engine before fitting the reversing valve gear. For the original owner, I did some work on this engine a while back, but it was mainly piping. I did however tweak the engine's timing to make it run better. And as you can clearly see and hear from the couple of clips that precede this one, the engine runs very well. I think it's time to oil it, and I'm using Hallett's lubricating oil for this. And as I'm running on compressed air, I also put some into the cylinder pipe. But at this point, I'd just like to say that if I was running the engine using steam, I would of course use the proper steam cylinder oil. For this quick air test though, I just give it a quick squirt of the compound oil. So now I'm just going to leave it running and let you have a listen to it and I'll run it in slow motion too. As you can clearly see and hear, there's nothing wrong with this engine. The timing's more or less perfect, and the crankshaft is exceptionally straight. In fact, it's one of the straightest crankshafts I think I've ever seen on a Stuart engine of this size, with no wobble whatsoever. The first step towards fitting the reversing valve gear is to remove the existing single eccentric. This is now surplus to requirements and will go in the box with the other parts. And once again, just for a change, I do feel the need to say that this is a really well made engine. And as the engine runs so well, I think it's time just to get on with the job. I'm replacing the single eccentric with this pair of eccentrics connected to an expansion link. At first it wouldn't go on the shaft all the way down, then I realised there was a grub screw. So I slackened off the grub screw and tried again. And this time it fitted perfectly. No shake at all on the crankshaft, really good machining. I wish some of the other engines that I've worked on were as good as this one. With this engine I have a choice of three valve forks, the original one which is too small, the one in my right hand which is the wrong shape, and the one in my left hand is absolutely perfect. This piece I have in my fingers at the moment is called a die block. And once this part is cut to the right size, this is what the expansion link slides back and forth on. The first thing to do is to remove the old valve fork. So I'm using a spanner on the nut and then I'm using my barco spanner, but not that way around. I need to use it this way around because if I use it the other way, I could crush or bend the valve fork and then it would be no good. So bear this in mind whenever you're using a spanner on a valve fork. I'm fitting the new valve fork in position at the moment and I don't think this is going to work, but I'll continue anyway. This clip shows me tightening the nut onto the new valve fork. And once again, please note the orientation of my Barco spanner when I hold the valve fork to allow me to use the other spanner to tighten the nut down onto it. This is only a model engine, so it doesn't need torquing up like it would if you were working on a car engine. The best term to use is just nip it up, but don't over tighten it. And now we have an immediate problem. The expansion link will not fit in the valve fork because basically the valve is too long. And that possibly explains why there are some other valve rods in the tin. At this stage I'm only interested in the fact that the expansion link is a good fit in the slot. I've put the old eccentric in the plastic bag that the other one came out of and that's in the red box with the rest of the parts. And that's it for this episode. 
More coming soon. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.